Good morning, Tony. Uh, you know, thank you for being here today. Just curious to hear your thoughts about why is it important to establish a relationship with a member of Congress? Well, the way uh, behavioral health gets funded is really through the federal government. And when, you know, politicians like Congress people run for office, that's not one of the issues they always talk about. So we have to get that issue in front of them. And the way you do that is to really establish a meaningful relationship with your local congressman. If we do that all over the country, then we'll have more strength and power to get accomplished what our goals are. And when you say meaningful relationship, what do you mean by that? Well, some people actually just once a year maybe go visit their congress person, and they don't remember who they are. The staff doesn't know who they are. Uh, and they could be forgotten once they leave the office. I, I think what you have to do is really get to know them, work with them, so they know who you are and your agency is and what you deliver and that you're important to them. Then when you go in, as we go in, we do that around the country, then we go into the office, uh, we, they'll listen to us and that's what you want. You know, sometimes I hear from National Council members that they hear they feel a little intimidated um, going up to a member of Congress or going to a meeting. So what would be some easy steps to get yourself ready for a meeting with a member of Congress or a staffer? Well, I'd start the, the process early. Uh, to, to get to know your congressman actually is, is very simple, and there's a lot of uh, ground that's open there to get to know them. It's a process that I think begins with your board of directors and your agency in establishing a, a policy for the agency, a, a strategy for advocacy. And one of those mm -hmm. is establishing that meaningful relationship. So one of the first things we do at our agency is we, we find out, you know, we do our research. We find out what, well, you know, what party the congressperson's at, mm -hmm. what positions they support, what they don't support. And then we actually go and help uh, we find somebody who's really interested, and it could be a board member, it could be myself. Uh, it's important to be yourself at all times, so you don't want to go acting like you're supporting somebody that you know, might be the opposite party from you, but you could find a board member that's the same party as your congressperson, or again, it could be you or a staff member, and somebody who loves politics, and, and get in there early. You know, um, the first thing you want to do is not go ask them for something. You, I think you should go and help them. Uh, they might be doing a fundraiser. They might be uh, doing a town hall meeting. You go and show your support, and you begin by getting to know the staff. And then you uh, are introduced to the congressperson, and mm -hmm. then you start the relationship that way. If you don't have anybody that likes to do politics or you don't know anybody who supports it, there's some websites you can go to. It's mm -hmm. very interesting. You can go to uh, FEC.gov, the Federal Election Commission, and they can show you who all the donors are. You find the donors in your district, and there's a number of them, and maybe one of those would make a good board member. And then they already they bring the relationship with them to the board. When somebody walks into a member of Congress's office and introduces them to a scheduler, um, what are maybe the five points that you would suggest National Council members have ready in their mind to say to a staffer at the beginning of the meeting? Well, I don't know if I'm going to give you five, but <laughs> I, I, I think the first thing you need to tell them who you are, uh, tell them about your agency, who you serve, uh, how many people you serve, uh, and that you're from their district. I mean, that's very important to give them a good background. Yeah, no, that's, that's a really great point. And can you describe what somebody might expect when they walk into a member of Congress's office? Well, it's different in the district and it's different in Washington, but let's take Washington, D.C., you're going to find it being very hectic. Um, these offices, when they were first built, uh, didn't have many staff members, and now they've all enlarged their staffs quite a bit, so everybody's stuck in cubby holes and they're running around. So you should expect uh, to be greeted nicely and probably sign your name and, and address so they have you for their record. Um, and can you describe what, what's it like in a district office? Are, are there any different expectations that we should have? Yeah. One thing you'll find in the, in the Washington office is most all the staff are probably not from the district. Uh, they tend to be kind of professional staffers. Uh, in the district, everybody is probably from that district. And it's a lot less hectic in, in the district. So uh, when you go there, You'll be able to talk to a staff person, sit down. They won't be as rushed, 
and that's a good place to establish your relationship and work with your relationship. Congressperson comes back to the district frequently, and you can meet with them there just as effective as you can in Washington. And what suggestions do you have um, for follow-up after you meet with a staffer? Right. Would you give them the key points, and we have our key points from the National Council that collectively in the country we've all agreed to. So you probably want to write a letter of thank you and then restate the points. And if they made a commitment in the, uh, in the meeting or they said they would make one in a couple of weeks, you, you'd want to follow up and find out, uh, either thank them for the commitment or find out what they're going to do. Keep, keep on them. And you know, to continue this idea of a meaningful relationship, do you have a suggestion for how often should you try to meet with these staffers or with members of Congress? Well, I don't think you have to meet with them a lot, but you, uh, and it would depend on the issues you have. You don't want to pester them and call them every day, but uh, you know, a few times a year would be good. Just you know, to make sure that they know who you are, and you, know, and you want to keep that relationship going. So the, sometimes you might uh, meet, you know, just do something to support them again, not so much what your issue is. What do you, I know some of our members, they try to get letters to the editor and op-ed pieces in local papers. Do you think that that impacts the chances of developing a meaningful relationship with a member of Congress? I think it's, it's really good to maintaining the relationship. You know, if they do something that you like and is helpful, write an op-ed piece for the paper or a letter to the editor, they'll see your name. Uh, just actually being on coalitions maybe that have nothing to do with, uh, have something to do with your agency, where uh, they might be doing an event and you get the congressperson invited to that event, which would be helpful. So in getting your agency in the papers, they read the papers and they make clippings. So if they know who you are and they, oh, here's common ground, where they're in the paper, they'll clip it and they'll remember those things. So I want to take this back to the community for a minute. Earlier you had mentioned town hall meetings as being a way in which to start developing a relationship with a member of Congress. But I also know that some of our members are hosting site visits. So just curious to hear your thoughts about that and what are steps that members can take to um, invite people to come for site visits? Right. Uh, site visits are very important. I might not start with a site visit again, that's why I said the town hall, but mm -hmm. once you have that relationship begun, they're more apt to respond positively to coming on a site visit. So with the site visit, a few key things you want to do is have a tight agenda, have the points in your head, what you want to say, make sure that they see the people you serve. I mean, they want to they want to hear from them and see the story, see how, the, how you're helping their constituents. So that's really important. Also let them, if it's a congressperson, let them address the staff. That, that They'll like that too. Mm -hmm. So they get something out of it that way. And uh, yeah, it goes a long way and it's very important if you can do a site visit. And again, having them see and talk to the people that are being served and hearing positive stories, that's going to resonate with them and, and keep in their mind. And I, this is a, would also be a great way to potentially bring press to your center as well, that um, maybe local press may want to cover this event. Well, that, that's true. Um, where I live in Michigan, the press doesn't, we don't even get a paper delivered five days a week anymore. We're a major metropolitan yeah. area, and so reporters are thin. But when you, what you can do if the press won't come is, you know, take your own pictures, have your PR person uh, write the story and deliver it to the papers, and they'll probably be happy to publish them. That's great. And so, you know, we have about 500 people in town today for Hill Day, um, and this is an incredible opportunity for our members to engage with their members of Congress. Uh, do you have suggestions for follow-up that should be done over the next month or two with people doing visits at today's Hill Day? Well, again, it's what you would do with any follow-up. You thank them for uh, listening to you. Uh, you restate what they promised and or, or find out what commitments they were made. Uh, yeah, certainly would follow up on the visits. Hill Day is an exciting thing because everybody's going at the same time and that gives a sense of power and, and it's effective. And, you know, I guess a discussion about political engagement uh, wouldn't be complete this year without uh, mention of the midterm elections and that we have all of these candidates now um, that are meeting with members of communities. And so 
thinking about that, how can our members get involved in the political process? Um, what should we be doing now um, before candidates are elected into right. office? Right. That's, that's really important because if you have a candidate that's leaving office and not going to get re or won't get reelected, you want to start building a relationship with who you think will be elected, the one or two people. So again, what we do is we, we find the people that love politics and we get them active on the campaigns. And that's a great way to meet the congressperson because if you're working on a campaign, you're going to see them and they're going to see you helping them. And they'll be very uh, receptive to re listening to you, responding, coming for visits, and that'll be very helpful. But it's important to always get the right person to do that. You have to get a person that really likes it and that really likes the candidate. If you're not genuine in yourself, it's not going to come off very well. So you always have to be the natural you. As a CEO, do you have advice to other CEOs about how they can go about uh, developing interest in political engagement activities within your staff? Well, I think it's more, that goes back to the board again. I think the board has to establish advocacy as an important part of what the organization d does and have a strategy. And you'll find the staff that are interested in the strategy and, you know, appoint, uh, designate those to, to take on different tasks. Because you have more than you have a congressperson, which we're talking here, but you have your state representatives, your senators, you have yeah. a lot of people to engage with. In the governor's mm -hmm. office as well, which is also really important. Correct. Okay. I do think one thing important is whatever you do, let the national council know you're doing it. Uh, it's, it's important for you and your staff to know what relations we have, because maybe there's an important bill that you need to get a signature for, and you say, oh. Tony Rothschild is really close at common ground with Congressman Levin, who's the chairperson of the uh, Ways and Means Committee, mm -hmm. and you know we'll be able to call him and ask for something uh, if you don't personally have that kind.